The old man pointed a gnarled finger at the swirling gray ceiling, his eyes reflecting a distant memory. My father, he rasped. He saw the sun. He spoke of it often, a glowing orb that brought life and warmth. The children around him, their faces pale and drawn in the dim electric light, gasped in unison, their imaginations ignited. To them the sun was a myth, a bedtime story told to comfort them in the dark. But the old man, his eyes clouded with time, he remembered it vividly. He remembered a world bathed in golden light, a sky painted with impossible blues, colors that seemed almost magical. He remembered the warmth on his skin, the scent of earth after a rain, a feeling of being truly alive. The old man coughed, a dry rattling sound that echoed in the silence. The air, stale and metallic, hung heavy in his lungs, a constant reminder of their confinement. He remembered the taste of fresh air, the sweet song of birds, melodies that filled the air with joy. It was a memory fading like a dream upon waking, the edges blurring, the colors dimming, slipping away. He clung to it desperately, a lifeline to a world lost, a, a world that once was. The children, their faces etched with a lifetime spent beneath the earth, leaned closer, eager for more. They had only known the cold, unforgiving steel of the underground city, a place devoid of natural beauty. We forgot, he croaked, his voice heavy with sorrow. We forgot what it meant to be human, to feel the sun's embrace. The city of Ember, as it was known, was a testament to human ingenuity and despair. Carved into the heart of a mountain, it was a labyrinth of tunnels and caverns, a steel and concrete jungle lit by flickering fluorescent bulbs. Towers of metal and glass, connected by a network of walkways and bridges, stretched towards the unseen ceiling. Life in Ember was a constant struggle for survival. Food grown in hydroponic farms beneath the glare of artificial suns was rationed carefully. Water, recycled endlessly, carried the metallic tang of its artificial origins. The citizens of Ember were a pale and haggard lot, their skin bleached by the lack of sunlight. Yet, despite the harshness of their existence, life found a way. Hope, it seemed, could bloom even in the darkest of places. Deep within the heart of the city, nestled amongst the humming generators and whirring ventilation shafts, lay the Hall of Memories. This hidden sanctuary was a testament to a time long past, a time that the citizens of Ember could only dream about. Here, amidst dusty artifacts and faded photographs, the citizens of Ember clung to the remnants of their past. Each item, each photograph, was a fragment of a story, a piece of a puzzle that painted a picture of a world they had never seen. Yellowed books, their pages brittle with eich, told tales of a world bathed in sunlight, a world that seemed almost mythical to the people of Ember. These books spoke of forests and oceans, vast and teeming with life, of animals and birds unknown to the inhabitants of Ember. Creatures that roamed freely under the open sky, a sky that the citizens could only imagine. Crumpled maps, their ink faded and lines blurred, hinted at a world beyond the confines of their subterranean prison. These maps were like windows to a lost world, a world that beckoned with the promise of freedom and adventure. The Hall of Memories was a place of pilgrimage, a place to remember a world they had never known. It was a sacred space where the past and present intertwined, offering a glimpse into what once was. For within these walls, amidst the echoes of a forgotten world, the citizens of Ember found solace. They found comfort in the knowledge that their world was once vibrant and full of life. They found a reason to hope, even in the face of despair. The Hall of Memories was not just a repository of the past, but a beacon of hope for the future. The weight of the world above, a thousand tons of rock and earth, pressed down on the citizens of Ember. It was a physical weight, a crushing pressure that permeated their very being. But it was also a psychological burden, a constant reminder of their isolation, 
their vulnerability. Every creak of metal, every groan of stressed concrete, was a whisper of the world above, a reminder of their precarious existence. The citizens of Ember lived in a constant state of anxiety, their lives ruled by the fear of collapse. The older generation, those who remembered the surface, carried the heaviest burden. They bore the weight of their ancestors' failure, the guilt of condemning their descendants to a life underground. The younger generation, born into this subterranean existence, knew no other life. Despite the hardships, despite the ever-present darkness, a spark of hope ignited in the heart of Ember. A young girl, her spirit unbroken by the oppressive atmosphere, stumbled upon a hidden message. A message from the builders of Ember, a message of hope. The message, passed down through generations, spoke of a way out, an escape route from their subterranean prison. The girl, her heart pounding with excitement, shared her discovery with others. At first, they were skeptical, disbelieving. But the message, with its detailed instructions and cryptic clues, was too compelling to ignore. A small group of citizens, their spirits reignited by the flicker of hope, banded together. They knew the risks, but they also knew that they could no longer remain trapped in the darkness. The news of the message spread through the city like wildfire, igniting a spark in the hearts of the oppressed. Whispers of rebellion, of escape, echoed through the steel corridors, bouncing off the cold, unyielding walls. For the first time in generations, the citizens of Ember dared to dream of a better life, a life beyond the confines of their underground prison. They envisioned a world where the sun shone brightly and the air was fresh and free. But not everyone welcomed the news. Skepticism and fear clouded the minds of many. The city's leaders, those who had grown accustomed to their power, their control over the dwindling resources, saw the message as a threat. They knew that their reign was built on the ignorance and fear of the people. They feared the chaos that would ensue if the citizens learned the truth, if they dared to hope. The fragile balance of power would be shattered. And so, they moved to silence the whispers, to crush the burgeoning rebellion before it could take root. They tightened their grip on the city, increasing patrols, censoring information, and spreading propaganda to maintain their control. They branded those who spoke of the message as traitors, as enemies of the state, to instill fear and discourage dissent. Fear, once again, cast its long shadow over the city of Ember, threatening to snuff out the flicker of hope. But the seed of hope, once planted, was difficult to extinguish. It glowed faintly, a reminder that even in the darkest times, the human spirit yearns for freedom and light. The stage is set for a showdown, a clash between the forces of darkness and the flicker of hope. The citizens of Ember, armed with nothing but their courage and their determination, prepare to confront their oppressors. The fate of the city, the future of their people, hangs in the balance. Will they succeed in their quest for freedom? Will they break free from their subterranean prison and reclaim their birthright, the world above? The answer, my friends, is yet to be written. The future of Ember, the fate of its people, rests in your hands. The seed of hope has been planted.